Let's talk about the issue of copycats in the world of 3D printing. Now, this affects me personally, and I have some very strong feelings on the issue, which are shared uh, by a lot of people in the industry. And really, this isn't an issue which is specific only to 3D printing. It's sort of a capitalism-wide uh, issue. Uh, it has to do with patents and all of that too. So we're gonna get into it, but first, cue the music. This is a BL Touch uh, bed sensor, like bed leveling sensor for 3D printers. Now this is a very special probe because it physically uh, touches the bed to measure the distance between the, the nozzle and the, and, the, and the bed so that you get a very accurate uh, auto bed leveling with this probe. All the other uh, sort of solutions that are out there uh, involve sort of magic, right? Light sensors or inductive uh, sensors, this, these sorts of things. Um, this is the only uh, sort of professional design that's out there that I know of. Um, and it's really, really well made. So this girl Paris invented this. Uh, she's from South Korea. She, it was so innovative that she won the National Science Award in her country. And then she spent a bunch of effort to sort of redesign whatever innovation she came up with uh, so that it was producible in factories. So prototyping something is a lot different than making it you know, manufacturable. And then she spent a bunch of time marketing. For instance, I saw her at the uh, Bay Area Maker Fair. So she had to spend uh, all that money to buy a booth, to print out all the, the, the you know, the, the things, the signs around her booth. Uh, she had to fly from South Korea. This is thousands and thousands of dollars that she's spending on marketing uh, to get the word out about how cool her sensors are. And as soon as she proved, a couple years ago, as soon as she proved uh, that this sensor was a good thing and that it was viable in the marketplace, China copied her. They just knocked her off. Like, you go and you buy the copy and it looks just like this. Uh, instead of having a detachable wire connector, the wires are soldered on and you know, the, maybe the logic on the board uh, on the sensor on the one from China maybe isn't as good, but for all intents and purposes, it's, it's the same. It functions the same. Uh, and that sucks because of course, we consumers are cheap. We're gonna buy the least expensive thing that works. Um, because we don't have that much money to spend and we, we want to maximize our purchasing potential, right? Um, so $40 for a sensor versus $20 for a sensor, it's a no-brainer for us, right? Unless we're being moral and we are fully aware that there's a girl who's poured her life and her dreams into this one sensor and that we're effectively stealing from her by supporting China's knockoff industry. But how many of us are, are aware of that? How many of us do that? So. Okay, now let's talk about MakerBot. Now, I'm not gonna go into the whole history of MakerBot. If you don't already know uh, all about that, please do yourself the favor and, and go read all the articles and figure out what happened there. Um, but basically, it works like this. Stratasys is the big granddaddy of 3D printing to a large extent, right? And they had tons of patents. And uh, we can't fault them for having patents because they thought of this stuff 20 years ago. All the stuff that we're doing, they were already working on 20 years ago. Um, and had they not gotten patents, there's no doubt that China would have copied them. And they were so early to the market, kind of like, you know, this girl inventing this, this sensor, right? They had so many innovations that they came up with in-house, their engineers invented. They had to pay those engineers salaries and all that stuff. Um, they had to get patents on it to protect their industry for 20 years. Well, that's why printers cost $35,000 for 20 years. So as soon as, uh, the 20 years ended on those patents on, uh, uh, for 3D printing, in came the DIYer. All of us started using Arduinos as CNC controllers to make our little 3D printers. And they were crappy in the beginning, but they got better real quick. And that's because of this massive effort by a whole lot of very smart people in the community. Okay, so MakerBot jumped on to that momentum. And they used all of these innovations because this machine looks nothing like a Stratasys machine. Stratasys machines, for instance, don't use bed leveling. They just print a layer, a big thick layer of the dissolvable support material. And that, that gets you a flat bed that they can then print on with the, with the actual material. So that's one thing that we innovated as a community that Stratasys hadn't done, for instance. Um, but the core 
the, the extrusion, the FDM core was patented and we couldn't do anything with it until the patents expired. And then the community came up with all these great innovations. And MakerBot jumped onto this, used all of the innovations that the community was coming up with to make an open source, and that's the key, it was an open source printer that anybody could make a copy of. They gave out uh, firmware for free, right? Uh, you know, all of this was open source and uh, it was amazing, right? Most people would just go buy a MakerBot, but a lot of people uh, who are really enthusiasts would make their own printers and come up with new innovations. And that's how we kept moving uh, the whole thing forward, right? We kept innovating as a group. Well, everybody hates MakerBot because they took the group's innovations, made a printer out of it, wrapped it up, then yanked the open source away. They just, they closed it all up in a proprietary package and sold that package to Stratasys. Stratasys, we like to think of them as the big evil company, but you know, like I said, they had their interests to protect and they thought of this first. They invented the thing and they brought it to market and we would not be where we are today without Stratasys. True, it would have been nice to have not have to wait 20 years, but hey, at least we got to it now. So, um, of course, MakerBot is more evil than Stratasys because they stole from the community. They took all of our input and then sold it to Stratasys. Um, so how does this relate to today? Because MakerBot is no longer really a company that any of us talk about, right? Um, well, the MakerBot of right now is Prusa. Like, let's just get some historical perspective and be honest about this. Um, Prusa took that position once MakerBot imploded. And uh, Prusa is doing exactly what MakerBot did, okay? They are taking innovations from the community and uh, they are using them in their printers. And it's great because they do that, right? They, they actively innovate every time they release a new one. They don't just sit back on their laurels and sell that machine that will keep selling. Hey, we would have all keep buying the Mark II, right? I mean, that, that thing had selling potential for a few more years, but now they come with a Mark III and blow all of our minds with all these great innovations. So the question is now, did they think of their innovations in-house, like Stratasys did, right? Um, because if they did, they probably should have gotten a patent on them just like Stratasys did, but they didn't, right? They're doing the same game that MakerBot did. They're taking the innovations from all of us in the community and they're using them in their printers, which I love. Like, don't get me wrong about that. I love the fact that all of our ideas are being put into a printer which we can then buy. Okay, now let's talk about my idea. I made a video five months ago. You can go watch that video. I'm gonna link it right down below. And I talked about inductive proximity sensors and how they're sensitive to heat. They have a different reading when they are hot and they have a different reading when they are cold. Okay, so I said in my video, you know what, I'm just gonna put it right here. So I did a test on the sensor itself based on how hot or how cold it was. Pretty basic test. I basically put the sensor, touched it to a 100 degree bed so it got very hot and then did my, temp or my, my distance readings and then I lifted the sensor up off the bed and cooled it down with an ice cube and did the, uh, the, same, temp or the same distance reading. And I did that 10 times for both the ice cube and 10 times for the, for the uh, heated bed and what I came up with was an average of 1.77 millimeters on the heated bed or the heated sensor and 2.2 millimeters on the cooled sensor with the ice cube. So that's a, a difference of 0.4 millimeters or I'm sorry, 0.5 millimeters. So uh, that's huge. And so that's basically, uh, depending on how hot or how cold your sensor is, it's gonna, it's gonna vary wildly. Now, this is pretty problematic if you think about it because you never know what your temperature is on your sensor. It's not like you have a, you know, a thermistor sitting on your sensor. So there, you can see, I said it. You need to put a temperature sensor in the probe. I said that five months ago. Now, um, here's where things get a little dicey, right? It is possible that Prusa himself found this issue as well. It is possible that somebody else on the internet that I am unaware of found this issue out before that even, right? And, and made a post about it somewhere. Uh, maybe I was not the first. That's very, very possible. I was doing my little three days. I spent three days to make that study, right? So that's like 30 hours of my life. And uh, Proust is now gonna reap the benefits of my study if he did indeed find that information through my video. And 
I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with only Prusa reaping the benefits. I released that information out there. I didn't lock it up. I didn't try to go sell it. I didn't do any of that. Uh, I released it out there freely for everybody to use. So this is sort of an open, open source issue, right? So this means, what this means is, unlike Paris, who is being hurt by them stealing her idea, my idea is out there and I want China to take it. I want China to copy it. I want to be able to get this Creality with that technology uh, involved with it for cheaper than what Proust is making his printer for because it was my idea, okay? So I have that right to say China copied this one, right? But everybody's crediting Prusa with the innovation, okay? Prusa didn't come up with this. I don't think anyway. Unless he can prove me wrong, he didn't come up with this. I came up with this. So that's my challenge. Show some documentation that predates my five-month-old video uh, showing this issue. Why am I making this video? Well, I would like Prusa to give me a printer. I want to review it. I want to be a fanboy for Prusa. I love what they do. Um, and I've reached out to them and asked them for a printer and they gave me a no answer. It's, it's not going to happen, right? And that kind of sucks because this is one of the primary um, innovations that they're selling this printer based on. I mean, yeah, they have that awesome bed and they have a couple other things that they did, but you know, this is one of the top things that everybody wants to talk about. And it came from me and I'm not getting any credit and I don't get a printer. I don't want printers for life from Prusa. I just want a copy of this printer that, that you used my innovation to make. So um, that's that. I mean, this is controversial and I'm personally involved and I'm a little bit miffed about all this, right? Because I did spend three days of my life for a video that made me $3 in AdSense. I made $3 for those 30 hours of work. That's like a penny an hour, right? Did I do the math right? Yeah, I did the math right. That's that's ridiculous pay. And so I'm getting no benefit. I put that information out there for everybody to use and yet only one company is reaping the benefits. And they're also out there on the internet acting like they're the one that came up with this and getting angry when China copies them. Okay, but those aren't their ideas to be angry about. I'm the one that came up with that idea and I give China permission. But it's not like I can just write a permission slip to all of China. They're not, China's afraid of copying Prusa because China's afraid of the backlash from the community. So. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm really interested to hear uh, everybody's opinion because uh, obviously I'm personally involved, so I can't be unbiased on this one. Okay, if this is your first time seeing this channel, make sure you hit all of the good buttons down below, including the like and the bell icon. Uh, bell is better than a like. You actually get the notifications when I release new videos. Um, but what's coming? I'm gonna be upgrading the final uh, touches onto the AnyCubic Castle here, and that will solve the end effector tilt so that I can get auto mesh bed leveling working with the BL Touch. And then after that, we're gonna be moving over here to the Creality CR10 and doing a lot of great upgrades to that uh, printer that you have not yet seen. Um, and make sure that you go down in the description and buy these printers, if you're gonna buy them, from GearBest. And GearBest gives me these printers for free. I do not get any money from GearBest, except I get free printers. But they give me free printers, unlike Prusa.